you for joining me today and for pressing play. I'm excited that you guys are here and that we get to continue our Bible stories together. So last week we were in the book of 1 Samuel chapters 4 through 6. And we are going to be in chapter Samuel, 1 Samuel again. And this time we're going to be in chapters 8 through 15. And so I have your Bibles here. I have mine. I hope you have yours. And we're going to get started in reading our story. Okay, remember our Bible is God's special book. His words are written there. And every time I turn the page, I handle it with care. So I hope you have your Bibles. I hope you're open to 1 Samuel. And I hope you can listen to, to uh, the story today, okay? So our story is going to be about Israel's first king. Now remember, they haven't had a king this whole time, have they? Who have they had? Do you remember what the name was of the, of the person who was going to help them? Do you remember? They were judges. Right, judges. They uh, remember Israel would get into um, trouble. They would sin. They'd say, God help us. And God would send them a judge. And the judge would bring them up out of their, of their situation. Well, this time, Israel's not crying for, uh, for God to help them. They are saying, give us a king. We want a king. So that's what God does. God sends them their first king. Now, before we read our story, I want you to think, and I want you to see what you think. Do you think this king is going to be obedient? He's going to obey. He's going to listen. He's going to do what the Lord is asking of him? Or do you think he's going to disobey and not do and not listen to what God is asking? So what do you think? Do you think he's going to obey or disobey? Is he going to do and listen, or is he not going to do and not going to listen? What do you think? Hurry, right, quick, before we start a lesson, what do you think? All right, so hold your thoughts, and we're going to read our story. I hope you have your Bibles open, and let's start, okay? This is 1 Samuel chapters 8 through 15. Samuel was a judge over Israel, and at this time Israel had no king. <clears throat> but the leaders of Israel said, We want a king like the nations around us. Samuel wasn't sure how to respond, so he prayed to God. God said, give them what they want, but warn them what it would be like to have an earthly king. A king could make their son serve in the army. He could take their daughters away from them. He could take away their fields. He could take away the servants. But the Israelites didn't care. Give us a king, they responded. So God brought to Samuel a man named Saul. Can you say Saul? That's his name. Samuel said, Saul, you're going to be the king of Israel. And Saul was surprised. He was from the tribe of Benjamin, the smallest tribe in Israel. Samuel anointed Saul and the spirit of God was on Saul. When the time came for Samuel when Samuel, for Samuel to introduce the Israelites to their new king, no one could find Saul. God said, there he is, hidden among the supplies. So the people ran to Saul. Long live the king, they said. The Israelites thought Saul would be a good king. But Saul did not obey God. One day, Saul took an army to fight the Philistines. But the Philistines had more chariots, more horses, and more soldiers. So Saul wanted to ask God for help. Maybe if he made an offering to God, then he would win the battle. But there was one problem. Only a priest like Samuel were allowed to who was only allowed to make an offering to God. So Saul waited, but Samuel did not come. Saul's soldiers started to leave, so Saul decided to make an offering to God himself. Then Samuel arrived. Oh man, what's Samuel going to say? You have disobeyed God. Samuel, Samuel said that to him. You will not be king much longer. God is going to find someone obedient to be king. Sometime later, the Israelites won a battle against the Amalekites. And God wanted Saul to destroy everything. But Saul only destroyed the things that he wanted to, he didn't want. God told Samuel, I regret that I made Saul the king. 
because he does not listen to me and obey me. Samuel confronted Saul. And you know what Saul said? Saul said, I did obey. I obey God. Saul argued with Samuel. I only served the best animals to sacrifice to the Lord. And Samuel asked Saul, Does God care more about obedience or sacrifices? You rejected him, his instructions, so God has rejected you as king. Saul admitted his sin and asked for forgiveness. And Samuel said, God has taken away your kingship today, and he will make someone else a great king. So, was Samuel, or sorry, was Saul, who was the first king of Israel, was he obedient? Did he obey? Did he listen? Or was he disobedient? And he didn't obey, he didn't listen. Which was the, what's the answer? Do you, do you know, now that you listened? He was disobedient. He did not obey God. And, um, and uh, so, I mean, he didn't obey. Do we obey all the time? No. Do you listen to your mommy and daddy sometimes? No. Do I obey sometimes? Uh, do I disobey sometimes? Yes. Sometimes I don't obey God and I don't listen to God. But God still loves us. And, you know, he asked for forgiveness and God, you know, forgave him. But he still had his consequence of not being king. So that means there's going to be another king. And we're going to learn about that next week. There's going to be another, a new king who's going to listen and obey to God. But let's go to our big picture question. Um, now that we have finished reading our story and learning about the first king and seeing that he did disobey and that he did not listen to God and he tried to do things on his own in his own hands, just like the Israelites did. They wanted a king. They didn't want to listen to God. Did God want them to have a king? No, he didn't. He wanted to be their king, but the Israelites said, no, we want a king. So with this goes to our big picture question. It, that is, is there anything or anyone bigger than God? No, there's not. There's no king on earth greater than God. There's no one here on earth greater than God. Now, I will say that God did send an even perfect, a better king, a perfect king, one who did obey him. And who was that? Do you know who that was? Jesus. Jesus is the king that came to earth, that died for our sins, and that obeyed God to the cross, to death on the cross. And he's the perfect king. Only Jesus is our perfect king here on earth. And I hope you have a good uh, time talking to this story with your brothers, your sisters, your mom and dad. And remember that we want to continue to be in our Bibles and learning and growing with God. And I hope you guys are in your Bibles too with your parents and your siblings. And if you have any questions, let me know. If you have any prayer requests, please email me. I'd love to be praying for you. And let's close this time together with a prayer. Our hands we fold, our heads we bow so we can talk to God just now. Thank you, God, for this story. Thank you, God, for your Bible, the true words so we can learn from it. Dear Lord, I want to say thank you for bringing Jesus on this earth, that he was perfect and he obeyed, and that he died on the cross for our sins. Dear Lord, I ask for forgiveness for us when we disobey, when we don't do the things that you want us to do, when we disobey you, when we disobey our parents, when we disobey uh, those who are in authority of us, our teachers and other leaders. Help us to be more like you, to be obedient and to listen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I hope you guys can go um, look at your activity sheets and finish those out. I know the older kids, they have a word uh, word search with some of the words that we talked about today in our Bible study. And the younger kids, you guys have some easier stuff like coloring pages. And so anyway, have a great day. I'm so glad you came and I look forward to seeing you guys soon in person, but definitely next Sunday. I'll see you later. Bye.